Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Boss, and Spider-Man No Way Home's newest trailer confirms a bit about this movie's surprise cameos, but in one big case, an even bigger secret, completely by accident, it looks like. By now, you may have seen a Brazilian version of the trailer in which, as Electro, Sandman, and the Lizard leap across the scaffolding towards Spider-Man in the movie's apparent final battle, Lizard dives like he's in a World Cup semifinal. Yeah, it's a bizarre recoil. He is struck by some invisible object that can only be explained by Ant-Man, by Papa Feige sniping him for spoilers, or most likely the presence of Andrew Garfield Spider-Man and Tobey Maguire Spider-Man in this shot, but scrubbed from the trailer footage. Are you sure about that? And his name is John C. <laughs> It makes sense. Three versus three would be much better composition than one versus three. Lizard is clearly jumping towards something in a different spot than Tom Holland's Peter Parker is. And not only that, I'm pretty sure I found even more visual evidence that more things were removed from this moment of the trailer. So Toby and Andrew's existence in this movie, while still not confirmed by the filmmakers, it's just a foregone conclusion in the minds of most fans. So at this point, I am honestly less excited by their mere possible presence in this film than I now am by why they are actually in this movie and what that tells us about the broadening multiverse going forward. But let's start with a closer look at the shot in question. Peter leaps from the head of the Statue of Liberty toward Electro, Sandman, and Lizard, who attack from the surrounding scaffolding. Peter seems to be aiming directly for Sandman, while Sandman hooks his fist around from Peter's left, which tracks with the next shot of Peter dodging that sand fist and then barrel rolling over it before he dives. But not not only does the lizard recoil from some invisible hit in the Brazilian trailer, lizard is lined up to strike someone in a completely different spot than Peter is. But also, so is Electro. Go through this frame by frame. You can see Electro is also pulling back his arm for a strike against someone who is above where Peter is. And then when Peter does that dive in the next shot, you can see Electro still above, continuing to engage someone else with an electric blast. But then because I'm a crazy person who scrubbed through this footage even more closely, I found even more evidence of possibly removed assets around Peter during this battle. In the shot of Peter leaping off the Statue of Liberty head, if you look to the region to the right of Peter, there is definitely an upward moving smoky motion blur on the background rim of that giant cap shield. As if something was here leaping out of frame, removed, and when they had to pencil back in what was behind it, some of the motion blur stayed. Also, this one's a bit harder to see, but over on the left side of the same shot, a similar motion blur seems to be distorting the tip of Lady Liberty's spiky crown. So yeah, two things leaping upward right before Tom Holland Peter Parker does. Now, I thought this was just digital noise, but the distortion does not appear on any other regions of the frame or on the shot before this of Peter landing on the statue head, which you'll notice does cut to black as if to mask to other figures landing on either side of Peter right after he lands, who would then leap off right before he leaps. Now, when you go back to the wide collision shot, everything in frame is moving with debris, lightning, sand. You can't really discern any extraordinary motion blur, except there is a subtle, odd, downward sweep of Sandman's sand in the bottom of the frame like someone wafted it downward in that blank region that the lizard is approaching. Now, there's also this random detail a lot of you keep asking me about, this brown shape that's hanging from the scaffolding to the left of Ned as MJ falls. Some say this could be an arm of some Peter Parker that wasn't fully erased. To be honest, I don't see how this is an arm. It looks like a bundle of rope to me. And like, if a VFX artist goes to the effort to erase an asset, they don't get tired halfway through and then decide to recolor it brown. So I don't know what this is. I just don't think it's another Spider-Man though. Now, two months ago, after Andrew Garfield discussed some rumored set leaks from No Way Home on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, we here at New Rockstars did a VFX analysis on some online claims over whether or not the set footage of Garfield was doctored. Now, I won't show that full footage here, but I will tell you, it does seem to match 
the scaffolding that surrounds the Statue of Liberty in this trailer. And a special thanks to Exter, the world's largest smart wallet brand, for sponsoring this video. They design the smartest wallets in the world, which you can track with their solar-powered tracker worldwide. This is the tracker. It's solar-powered. It's discreet. It's light. And you can just slip it in your wallet. And then, if you ever have trouble finding your wallet, your tracker is here to help you find it instantly. It's voice-activated and solar-powered. Two hours of sunshine give it a three-month charge. So all you gotta do is download the Chipolo app on your phone, and then you can ring your wallet from your phone or your phone from your wallet. It works with Google Home, Alexa, and Siri. So, whoop -o. Siri, where's my wallet? <gasps> I hear it! I found it! In extra slim profile wallets, of which this is one, they're awesome. They're made of premium leather, they have RFID protection, and you can use this little button to instantly fan out your cards. So no more overstuffed wallets, no more giant lumps in your back pocket. Check out Exter Wallets with the link below and earn an additional discount with our code at shop.exter.com slash new rockstars. That's code rockstars to maximize your savings at shop.exter.com slash new rockstars. But beyond the visuals of this scene, there are some contextual clues in the trailer that help us understand why Toby and Andrew would even show up in this movie. Obviously, MJ falls from the scaffolding in slow motion that closely mirrors Gwen Stacy's death drop in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And while the trailer very clearly makes it seem like it's Tom Holland in his new Spidey suit reaching out for MJ here, it also does read like a chance for Andrew Garfield to redeem himself by saving MJ. And if they could scrub and swap out other stuff in this trailer, it's not too hard to imagine a different Spider-Man hand reaching down in the theatrical version. Also, there's a line where Doc Ock sees Tom Holland face and says, You're not Peter Parker. Reminding us that some Tobey Maguire Peter Parker exists somewhere in this merged Spider-Verse. Also, Peter mentions his spider bite to MJ. Not that big of a deal, but it is something that has only come up once in the MCU before this, and it seemed like the MCU was just gonna move on from Peter's origin, but hearing it now suggests that this line could be setting up this Peter, finally detailing his superhero origin in No Way Home, which could come in the form of a conversation with other Peter Parker whose varying bites, Uncle Ben deaths, and web shooting abilities are something we are all eager for them to compare notes on. Ultimately, I think this could tell us why alternate Peters could be so important to cross over into the MCU. Not just to blow our minds, it's gonna do that, but Peter needs to learn from other versions of himself that it is impossible to have it all. Something Tobey Maguire Peter learned in his movies, and that sometimes you might be unable to save someone you love, which Andrew Garfield Peter Parker learned in his movies. I mean, the fact that this battle restages Gwen Stacy's death drop with MJ hints that a key mechanism for Andrew and Toby's returns will be to give these past Peter Parkers one last chance to redeem their biggest mistakes. For Andrew Peter, that was letting Gwen die, obviously. And for Toby Peter, that was letting his mentors die, lying to his best friend, letting vengeance open him up to toxic influences, and turning his Mary Jane against him. While MJ forgave Peter in that final scene, they don't kiss, they don't get engaged, it's really a muddy, we're still working through this kind of ending. One of the reasons I think Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3 is super underappreciated, and a potential mixed bag of a future for that version of Peter Parker that this movie could revisit. Like, imagine Tobey Maguire Peter Parker never truly fixed things with MJ, and he now counsels Tom Holland Peter Parker, a younger Peter, to just retire early, enjoy a normal college life. Despite that pretty crappy advice Mr. Stark gave you in Civil War, when bad things happen, they don't always happen because of you, kid. You deserve your own life. So while many of us are expecting to hear the line, with great power comes great responsibility in No Way Home, it wouldn't surprise me to hear Tobey Maguire Peter Parker offer a more evolved take on that famous adage that only an experienced Spider-Man could speak with authority on. That really, our greatest responsibility is knowing when to give up that power. So this idea of learning from the past, one universe building on the knowledge gained from other universes, I think that's gonna be the driving theme as the MCU expands into a multiverse of cooperative cross-universe team-ups like the Spider-Verse, like the Captain Britain Corps, like the Fantastic Four, arguably what Kang has already accomplished with the Council of Kangs. You can support New Rockstars by checking out our merch options at NewRockstarsMerch.com, follow me at EA Voss, follow New Rockstars, subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis and breakdowns of everything Spider-Man related. Thanks for watching, bye. Thank <laughs> you.